Listen, I know the title is clickbaity, but we're gonna be taking this shot and turning it into that, and then I'm gonna show you how to shot match it and make it seamless like this. And the tutorial is perfect for beginners. We're gonna be using basic tools inside Resolve, nothing fancy. For those that don't know me, my name is Kazi. I've worked with brands like Adidas, Amazon Prime, Universal Studios, and I make no just straightforward color grading tutorials so you can work with your dream clients. All right, so let's start from the top. When it comes to creating a successful grade, it doesn't start right here. It starts with an email. It starts with the dialogue with your client. It starts with asking them, what exactly do they have in mind? Because when I started grading, I made the biggest mistake, which is getting your hands on the footage and just get going. Uh, usually they will provide some sort of information, right? They'll say, oh, whatever, this is a horror film. This is a whatever film. And you can just go, okay, I know exactly what I need to do. You can think about two movies that are set in future. Let's just say Tron and then I Am Legend. Two completely different looks. That's why you have to sit down with your client, with your director, and just try, get that answer out. Like ask them, what are you looking for? And when they say, well, you know, make it pop, blah, blah, blah. Just be like, what do you mean? And if they're just like, oh, I don't know. This is why I'm hiring you. That's okay. Take them to shotdeck.com. This video is not affiliate with shotdeck.com, but take them there and then just say, can you give me a reference? Like, do you have a movie in mind? Do you have a music video in mind? Do you have a commercial in mind? Type that in. Shot Deck will probably, most probably have those stills. Pull that up and then use that as a reference. So for this example, we are role playing that our client wants a Dune Part 2 look. And this particular look, we're going to bring that in, use it as a reference. We will use it as our blinders, as our guide, not necessarily a copy paste operation. That's where a lot of people make that mistake of taking it too literally because the time of day of these two shots is different. So we can't just like try to copy paste it so hard that we basically end up over engineering the entire look. And that's when you just see a bad grade. You don't even know, even if you're not a colorist and you don't know how to put it in words, you can just look at it and be like, ah, it just looks kind of weird. It just doesn't look right. All right, so now that we have this part of it out of the way, that is our number one initiative if you wanna create a successful look, if you wanna get paid as a colorist. Now, let's get into the tutorial section of this video. All right, so now we're inside Resolve, and this footage is from Artlist, shot on red, converted to Rec. 709, working color space DaVinci White Gamut. So, simple setup. I'm using resolves uh, film look creator for grain only. And then we have a little bit of blooming going on as well. So if I do before and after, and the reason why I'm doing this is because if we pop open our reference, so this is our reference that we're aiming for. Again, we're not going to copy, we're going to use it as a guide. And then we're gonna look at our scopes and we're gonna get it in that world. And if we look at this and if I punch in, it does have some film character, right? So it has a nice amount of grain, very fine grain, and then it has a really nice character. I mean, as a matter of fact, looking at this, I think we should drop our grain from 35 millimeter to 65 millimeter because this is a little uh, chunkier than what we're seeing there. So I'm gonna go down here to grain and I'm going to change that to 65 and this is a lot finer. And I feel like if I go right here, it's very, see, now it's very close to what we're seeing there. So I'm just going to zoom out and I'm going to do the same thing to my next shot then. I'm gonna copy paste it. We're going to work on this first, okay? So we have some ways to go. But I'm gonna do, I'm gonna right click right here. I'm going to go under gamma, change this to linear. So this is going to be for our primaries. I'm gonna kill the Luma mix. We do this so we work in linear. It's very similar to how you would make changes in your camera. If you wanna learn more, I have a whole video I'm going to have a link in the description, check it out. So right now I'm just gonna jump right here. Consider this like our base look. And let's just keep it very simple, broad strokes, and then we're going to get surgical. So what are we seeing? We just have to get this image in this ballpark. So why don't we just start off with my gain? Mind you, this is not linear, okay? I'm just gonna go in my gain, I'm gonna start raising it up, okay? Always take it too far and then pull it down. So I'm gonna go, okay, here's somewhere, it doesn't look too bad. Okay, so somewhere around here. Now I'm gonna take my gamma and I'm gonna pull it down a little bit because there's a lot of weight here, okay? So I do not want to lose that weight. I wanna get my high key look going without sacrificing what we got going on here. So I'm gonna pull this down 
to something like that. And I'm going to use my gain and keep it somewhere around here. If you guys like my YouTube videos, I have a crazy deep dive training, which is absolutely free. It covers some of the biggest mistakes that beginners make. If you are interested, link is going to be in the description. Check it out after you finish watching this video. Certain things to keep in mind, different time of day, completely different thing going on. I mean, look at the light on him. Obviously it's well lit too, and there's a bunch of different sources. But as we can see, let's just say if we were following the sun, it's to the side. Whereas for our shot, look at the shadows. The sun is like almost right above us. Okay. Cause I mean, look at his shadow right here. So keep those things in mind. So then we can't do one to one. So again, very, very important when you're creating these looks. So if I do before and after, I mean, we came pretty close. So certain things that just jump out when we look at the actual color, there's more green in the sky than our sky, which has more magenta. So we have to swing that. And just overall, there's more green in the skin tone. So beautiful compared to ours where there's just more magenta. So we're going to do a global shift and we're going to do that in our linear. Remember, it works very similar to if you would have made these changes in camera. So we're just going to go under our temp and tint. And what did I say? We just have to add a little bit more green and we have to pull a little bit of red out. So let's start with tint and just move it. Go too far and then come back. And even if we put it somewhere around here and if I do before and after, we took that sting out that we were noticing before. Okay. And it's starting to look pretty good. So if I do before and after, like, look at this. So we're starting to get these tones even down here, which might as well be skin tones, right? So now it's looking pretty good. I mean, even if we look at the sky, it's looking much better than before. So this is all that I want to do in here for now. So this is what I mean with like broad strokes, right? Like, so we start big. Think about it as like, if you have paint and a blank canvas, just start smearing paint all over it until you start to see some shape form. And then once that happens, that's when you get surgical. And that's the part that's coming next. So this is our base look. This is our primaries. This is where the magic is going to happen. And this is where our secondaries are going to take place. This is where we're going to get surgical. We already did the broad strokes, right? So like if I look at my sky to sky, very different. There's a lot of blue here. There's a, a lot of neutral tones here. So we want to get in that world. So the way we're going to do that is I'm going to come out of there, select qualifier. We're going to make some selections. So I'm going to select this area because I don't want to affect this. And then I'm going to go ahead and select this area right here. And that's where I want to make those changes. So I'm going to go back, bring up my reference, punch in a little bit. And now what I want to do is unchain this and start making those changes. So the first thing that we can do is we actually use our Luma and I'm going to start raising it up and like, look at how we are now closing that gap. So that's the first change that we want to make. The second change is there's more yellow here than there is here. So we're going to do that by going into our blue and bringing that down just a little bit. We don't want to overdo anything. Honestly, I feel like we are just there. So if I go back and forth again, just guys, remember, like we're not trying to be a copycat. OK, so if I just do before and after now, I mean, come on, like look at these two images and how big of a difference like this node made. I mean, just look at that. So this is where we get surgical, like I said, right? So like we did our base here. We did just a little bit to get like that magenta out of our image to put us in that world. And if I take these three and if I do before and after, I mean, that's a really, really good look, right? Especially if we're like here somewhere. I mean, come on, this just looks like we're in the same world. So now I go on this shot and I just copy paste that grade and see where we are. So if I pull this up and go between the two, I mean, this is pretty good. The one thing that I see is the bright parts might be too bright. So this is where we go back to this shot and we just basically right click on this and pull this down. So this is before this is after now we're only affecting the actual color and we're not necessarily messing with the highlights. Uh, we can also just take our our overall Y channel from the top and pull it down a little bit because I just want it to match better. See, so this is a lot better, like way better. This is before this is after. OK, blends in so much better. And now if I just go from here and even if I bring in our other image, I mean, come on, this is like matching so nicely. 
So now if I go from this shot to this shot, matches really, really well. And uh, we're good. We're really good. There you have it. So we kept everything super simple. We used basic tools so nobody can sit here and be like, well, I can't do that because I don't have access to X, Y, and Z. That's it. If you are the type that likes to invest in him or herself, then I have a dedicated color grading course that doesn't only teach you the hard skills, also teaches you how to quit your nine to five and become a freelance colorist. Our students are working with some of the best brands in the world. Or if you are looking for a shortcut and want to get Hollywood caliber looks in minutes, then I have a toolkit that that is made for you and you can get these kind of looks in seconds. So links to all of that is in the description. Check it out. If you have any content suggestions, drop them down below. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace fans.